am Heidi Swap, and this is Create to Remember. And today I want to talk to you about something very near and dear to my heart. And uh, if you know me at all, you know that I harp on this. And that is just using your own handwriting in the stuff that you create. I think that a normal complaint for every scrapbooker is, I hate my handwriting. Or, you know, they're afraid to write on their scrapbook pages because they're afraid after they spend all this time making something beautiful that then they're going to just screw it up with their handwriting. And um, I say, no, I say it doesn't matter what your handwriting looks like. It is meaningful. It's part of you. It's a total, ref not a reflection of you, but it, it's you. It's recognizable. And anybody who knows you probably knows what your handwriting looks like, just like you could close your eyes and picture your husband's handwriting or your sister's handwriting or your mom or dad, you know, especially after you tried to forge, you know, those signatures for so long when you're <laughs> in high school. Just kidding, right? Anyway, I want to talk today about some of my, I've got five tips of improving your handwriting or hopefully to inspire you to get you to use your handwriting on your projects. I brought with me just a few projects um, that I love that I've done different techniques on. In, I mean, I could have brought a stack this big of, of projects that feature handwriting techniques because it's, it's important and I love it. And um, anyway, so I wanted to just show you a couple of these things. Now, this one in particular is one of my all-time favorite scrapbook pages. I love the color. I love the photo. And if you look closely here on the side where I've done just a little bit of handwriting, there's not a lot of journaling here, but I've used different handwriting styles. I've kind of made this into like a journaling composition. But notice how detailed those words are. You can only get that by using a very fine tip pen. And so the tips and types of pens that you buy are really important. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this. That on this page, you can see that it kind of has a small amount of journaling. It's not like I wrote a novel on here or anything, but I use my handwriting to create a title. But then I also just, in list format, listed some characteristics about my daughter. And I, again, you can see that this is a thicker pen tip and this is a thinner pen tip. And so you're gonna see that over and over. Um, I like to add in a little bit of color with my handwriting, and I think it really gives it some um, something interesting. It makes it different every time. And so here I've used colored pencils. So you can see that I've mixed cursive and extreme spacing, as I call it, on that where it says little. And then sister is a lot more fancy. But here on the same journaling block, I've got the journaling written there. And I'll talk about this in a minute, but notice how much easier it is to read this journaling than on this page. Now, I do love this page, and I love this photo. And this is a really a treasured memory and one of my favorite scrapbook pages. So here I wrote the title and did what I just told you. I used colored pencils to make it all fancy. I mixed cut handwriting styles by using cursive and some fancier handwriting. But look up here. I did my handwrite did my journaling right on the background of the page. And if I get really close to it, I can read it and it's no problem. But notice how much easier it is to read the journaling on this page where I have actually written on like a ledger paper or a lined paper, uh, you know. So if there's some things in your journaling that maybe you don't want to be as legible or as immediately readable, or maybe even have your journaling distract from your photo or whatever, then you can go ahead and do your journaling right on the background. If you want it to stand out and be much more readable, then it's a good idea to do it on a lighter page. 
All right, this page, again, is one of my most treasured memories. It was the day that my husband and I hiked from rim to rim on the uh, Grand Canyon, even though the signs at the Grand Canyon say, do not attempt to go from rim to rim. We did it. I just want you to know that. So there's, you'll notice that there's no embellishments on this entire page. It's totally simple scrapbook page. The embellishment is really just in the handwriting. So there's so much you can do with your handwriting. You'll notice here that I made certain words stand out by adding color and shadowing, that I did a lot of mixing of point sizes and um, even some cursive. And I got really crazy here and did some cutting, which, you know, you got to really want it because <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that again. But anyway, you might be looking at this and saying, you know, I hate my handwriting or how, you know, my handwriting would never look like that. So I want to talk to you about some tips and I've written them here and you'll be able to download this from the site and be able to have this right with you to remind you exactly what to do. But let's go over these tips. The first one is use pencil first. And it's always a good idea. For one, I'm a horrible speller. It's a huge issue. I spell things wrong all the time. But when you use pencil first, you're not nervous. Imagine spending two hours on a scrapbook page. Don't tell me you don't, because I know you do. You've just spent two hours and you take your marker and you're, and you're nervous, you start to sweat, your hands are sweating, and you're worried that you're about to totally screw up your scrapbook page, which, you know, that is when you're gonna spell things wrong, it's when you're not gonna know what you wanna say. So if you use pencil first, you have confidence, you're calm, you can erase it. You know, what I always tell people is to get a great eraser. Um, this is just a cheapy pink eraser, but it is way better than anything you're gonna find on the tip of the pencil. So I always tell people, bite off the eraser. If you're using your pencil, that way you can't even use that cr crummy eraser that's gonna totally like make huge marks all over, all over your beautiful scrapbook page. So get a great eraser, keep it handy, get rid of the crappy eraser off your pencil. All right, so I also always say, and I've got it right here on the page, check your spelling, or if you're me, have your husband check your spelling, or even your, you know, eighth grader, because they sometimes, sometimes somebody else will catch something that you don't. Without fail, there's a spelling problem on everything that I do. So you might even find one right here. Okay, the other thing I talked about, and I showed you some examples, is different point sizes. And I brought a bunch of different pens that I have, and, you know, the other thing that I wrote on here is it's a good idea to experiment with different pens. I have found that I love Sharpie pens. I love um, how dense the tip is and how easy it is for me to write with. So I love Sharpies. Um, I have also find that I love just your basic felt tip pen. I love Copic pens for journaling, an O3, and also an O1. The O1 is where you're gonna get that really super small detail like I have on this project. But you're gonna notice that when you get into a small space and you just wanna write a little date or a little note, it is so cute to write with this O1 tip. And believe you me, anybody can have good handwriting with an O1 tip. So keep in mind as a general rule, your handwriter is gonna get better and look nicer with a finer tip pen. So just kind of a little note to self. All right, so we talked about using the different point sizes. And the next thing I wanna talk about is sh probably something that you would just think naturally. But it is a good idea to journal with black ink. Um, sometimes, and I can remember this from the early days of scrapbooking, if I was doing a purple page, I wanted to use a purple pen or a green pen or a pink pen. And sometimes that's totally cute and it really works. But for the most part, if you really want to document what you're saying, use a black pen. And I put here, write on lighter paper. As I told you, if you want your journaling to kind of morph into the back and not be the first thing that somebody reads, then it's totally fine to write right on the background of your page or make your journaling hidden, whatever works for you. But I love to use ledger paper. 
And so here's just a few pieces of ledger paper. And the great thing about ledger paper is that you can find it in lots of different colors and styles, and it's going to help you write straight, which, you know, is nice. It looks nice, and it is nice. If you do any little research into graphology, you're going to learn that if you're a tilter to the left or a tilter to the right, it means certain things about your personality, and so, you know, you might want to have it in there from time to time. But I think for the most part, it's nice to have your handwriting look nice, be very legible and neat. Like I said, my fourth grader, use your best penmanship. You know, this is not a time to be scribbling or to be writing your list making font on your scrapbook page. You want to write nicely. Number four is mix it with stamps. Anytime that you mix it up or make it interesting, it's going to be more fun to do. So, you know, I am a collector of alphabet stamps. I love them. And this is one of my favorite fonts. And this one's about an inch. And you can see here on my little list that I've got it stamped. And I've even got another example that I can show you in this book that I made is that on each one of these pages, I wrote por a portion of it in my handwriting, and then I added lettering stamps. This is a great cheater, but it also adds interest and um, gives some consistency. So on all of these pages, I did the same thing. I wrote one of the words, the word his, in my handwriting, and then the rest of it in uh, in the letter, in the alphabet stamps. And I even like to mix and match the alphabet stamps as, as I go. So it's a, it's a really fun way to keep things interesting and also to draw attention to certain words as you're doing your journaling. Now, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is shadowing. And I wanted to demo this for you so that you could see me actually doing it because it's such a fun technique. But right here I used to have try shadowing with a gray pen. Now I brought with me just this um, gray Sukuniko pen. It's got a brush tip on one end and a fine tip on the other end. And it's just, it's just gray. And this is that gives us that shadow shade effect that really gives your words and letters dimension. In fact, if you look really closely, we could, we could zoom in, I bet, um, right here. If you zoom in real close to right here where it says beach trip, you can see that just to the side of each one of those letters has that gray line. It is the easiest way to really add pop to your titles. And, um, and I even add it to just my regular, even stamps. So if I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'll write, let's see, what should I write? I'll just write my name because I know how to spell that for sure. Now, I'm gonna take this gray pen, and I like to do it on the left side of the lines, do the shadow on the left side of the lines, but you can do it on either side just as long as you're consistent. So I'm just adding a very fine gray line right on the side of that. And you can see immediately, if I just do a portion of the word, how much more dimension it gives it. I'll go ahead and finish it. You don't want to press too hard and um, just the brush tip makes it really easy to just kind of ease in that um, shadowed look. So let me show you it, it again here on my handwriting tips page that you can see how I've added all the shadowing along that thicker line. So the shadowing works great with, with um, the thick lines and it also, let me just show you, oh, like I said, I like to use the brush side. Works great just along the edge of your stamping and really gives it dimension. So this is a great way just to mix it up. I think that sometimes we feel like the journaling is just kind of the mundane thing. It's the thing we have to do, but really it can look like an embellishment on your page.
Now, I did want to, I did bring with me one of my old projects that really kind of features um, the kind of journaling that I love to do. This is a book, six by six is a favorite size of mine. And you can see that I have a, it's kind of a piece of foam core in here. And if I kind of move it around, if I, can I move it around and you can still see it? I've got some little shrinky dinks inside and a piece of matte paper because this was from 2002, so about nine years ago, our beach trip. So when I open this up, this album is made with three 12 by 12 papers. And when I open it up, you can really see that you know, there's a ton of journaling on here, and I have done some interesting things. You see along the bottom, I've drew, drawn like a whimsical line and handwritten right along that line. I've done a lot of different storytelling. I've added some stamping. I've used some different point sizes. And one thing that I even love, which is very casual, is looking here on this particular, if you could zoom in on this photo. Notice how I've used a uh, Sharpie and I've literally drawn right on the photo to um, make little arrows and I've said funny things. Like this one says, easy up tent, it's the best, plus ties clamps worked great. So there's just funny little stories that triggers in my memory as I think back. And even though this was nine years ago, it takes me back immediately to, to that moment and to being on the beach with my family, which is one of my most precious and treasured times. So using your handwriting is so important and it can be fun and it can totally change your entire project. And I promise you that people will read it. So until next time, make pretty stuff.